Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. It's just me today. I'm flying solo and I'm just hoping that I can inspire you a little bit. I was, I just months ago, I wrote out this, what I thought was going to be a blog post, maybe turn it into a podcast episode. And then I never did it. And today it was just pulling on my heart to type it out as a blog post. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to record this too, because I think a lot of people need to hear this. And, you know, this time of year, I, I think any inspiration that we can grab onto is helpful. It's dark, it's winter, it's, you know, the holiday season is here. And a lot of times it's an emotional time of year for people who especially have lost loved ones throughout the year or over the past couple of years. So anyway, we're going to dive in today to the topic of trust. Let me ask you a question. Who do you trust? Trust is tricky. There are multiple levels of it and many ways that it influences our lives. As a personal brand, it's a necessity for people to buy from you. People buy based on whether or not they trust you. Trust is like a multi-lane highway, not a silo. There are different scenarios of trust. We have yourself. You trust yourself, a must if you want others to trust you. And then there are others. You trust others and others trust you. And then above all, there's God. You trust God. And God gave you free will, which means he trusts you to discern and make decisions. But at the same time, he wants you to lean on the Holy Spirit as your counselor and guide. Lean into him, accept Jesus for guidance. So why is it so important for you to trust yourself as an entrepreneur? When you trust yourself, you will be more confident. When others see that you trust yourself, and that you are confident, they will be more likely to trust you and feel confident that you can help them. On the contrary, if you don't trust yourself, others will be much less likely to trust you. And since trust determines buying practices, it's a necessity for a brand and business to be successfully successful financially. Without trust, you risk playing small and you may not believe you are worthy of signing clients. You may not believe you your ideal clients are ready to purchase from you. You may believe that your ideal clients are less than willing to pay for your services. And as a result, you're not going to price based on the immense value that you provide. You may lose sight of your passions, become frustrated and burnt out lose sight of your visions and the desires for your future. You won't show up for your audience consistently. You'll make excuses. You'll lose sight of your values. You'll do a disservice to your clients by not showing up. And you won't engage to build relationships and community. So how can you learn to alleviate doubt and disbelief and begin to trust yourself? The first way is through mindset work. The second is through journaling. The third through prayer. And these are not in any specific order. I recommend all of these testimonials and reading. So if we talk about mindset work, we're talking about how you can break down your negative, doubtful thoughts. Are they realistic? Sorry, I can't talk. Are they realistic and rational? Would someone you know, love and trust think the same negative thought or have the same doubt about you? If the answer to any of those thoughts are no, then it's time to actively change the negative doubtful thoughts. Throughout life, experiences happen that result in you believing one thing or another, often stereotyping others based on past experiences. Ask yourself if your reason for not trusting is related to a past experience, or is it possible that your intuition is telling you not to trust? This is where discernment comes into play. And as you do mindset work to question your thoughts and change them, you'll begin to discover what is reasonable doubt and what is not. One of my favorite things to do is journal. And I know you guys have heard that before, especially most recently in episode 211, where I interviewed Meryl Saferstein and we talked about journaling. 
And this is a good way to even step into journaling. Journaling is almost a cure-all. Anytime you can get negative thoughts, doubts, fears, et cetera, out of your head and onto paper, you have more opportunities in life and business. The process of writing changes neural pathways in the brain. If you have a lack of trust in yourself, write out every possible reason. What it, where is that doubt stemming from? Then map out where the doubt stems from and how you can change it. After you have all of the doubts and their origins written down, challenge them. In essence, this is mindset work too. Any doubts that are not valid or justified, change them. If the doubts are valid, write out the steps you can take to change them and overcome them. For example, if you have a lack of trust in your ability to, to serve your clients, grab all of the testimonials you have received and write them down in first person. I helped Susan navigate a major decision to go on to make $30,000 in one month. If you haven't had paying clients, air quotes, paying clients, do this exercise using people that you know that you've helped, maybe through volunteering, maybe through letting somebody pick your brain, maybe a family member. But write out who those people are that you've helped over the past year. As you list out all of the people that you've helped and the ways you've helped them, you will begin to alleviate doubt and start trusting yourself as the expert you truly are. You can also use scripture verses when you journal. Find verses that give you comfort that the Lord is with you, guiding you, and equipping you to make the right decisions and to take the necessary actions in your life and business. One of my favorite verses to refer to is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God is our source of trust and the one we should trust the most. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When you lack trust, journal a prayer created from a scripture verse. You will see trust grow for yourself and for God. So the other thing that I mentioned was prayer, and I alluded to this previously. You don't have to journal your prayers, but I do encourage you to use scripture when you pray. Scripture wasn't written for us, or scripture was, I'm sorry, scripture was written for us to refer to and to use when communicating with Jesus. God doesn't expect elaborate, fancy, long prayers. He just wants to know you trust him. Trust him enough to come to him. So a prayer as simple as Jesus, help me. Jesus, I trust you. Or Holy Spirit, guide me. They're enough. And sometimes if you're stuck in a place of unbelief and doubt, short prayers may be all you can muster. And that's totally fine. I'm going to give you a few verses that you can use as scriptures, just to give you an idea of how I do this and how I know other people do this. But let's take a look at Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So to turn that into a prayer, you can say, Lord, please uphold me and strengthen me. I trust you. I love you. Amen. That simple. Another verse you can use is Isaiah 26, 40. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord. The Lord himself is the rock eternal. So as a prayer, you could say, dear Lord, you are my rock eternal. Help me to trust you to guide me and strengthen me to trust myself as well. And please help me to trust those you desire for me to trust and allow into my life. Another one is Psalm 910. I mean, I could go on and on you guys, but I'm just giving you a few to use as a guide. So Psalm 910, those who know your name, trust in you for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. As a prayer, you can say, Heavenly Father, I know that you never forsake those who seek you and trust you. I seek you now, Lord, and I ask you, I ask that you open my heart and mind to trust the gifts you've given me and the people you have presented to me to serve. And then another one, Psalm 52, 8. But 
I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. And then as a prayer, Lord, I am like an olive tree flourishing in your home. I trust your unfailing love forever and ever. Help me to trust in the gifts you have given me and my abilities to live the calling you've placed on my heart. So I briefly mentioned before testimonials when we were talking about journaling, but aside from prayer and journaling, I love to read testimonials to build that trust in my gifts, the gifts that God has given me and my ability to use them. Anytime you experience doubt as to whether or not you are on the right path for your calling and purpose, read testimonials from past clients. They will inspire you to believe in yourself. They are also the best resource for gaining the trust of your audience and soulmate clients. Share them on your website and sprinkle them throughout your content. The people who wrote the testimonials trusted you. And because you served them well, using your God-given talents, they gave you that testimonial. Share it and read it and take all of those kind, loving, supportive words and reapply them to yourself so you can remember just how much impact, the positive impact you're having to help create that ripple effect of good in the world. Gratitude comes into play here too. Have a grateful heart for each and every person God has entrusted to you through his calling for you. Be grateful for their kind words and that you can read and reread to remind you of your gifts and your abilities. Another thing I like to do is read. And sometimes it's reading scripture, like I mentioned before, and sometimes it's reading books that or doing devotions. Um, it could be a business help book. It could be, and and sometimes when you read those, you know, you, you pick them up because you think you need them. And then as you start reading, you think, oh my gosh, I already know that I already do that. And it built your trust in yourself and your knowledge and your abilities. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing is to, if you, that I'm going to highly recommend is if you haven't read devotions around the Holy spirit, then I encourage you to do so. And I would say, start with don't miss out by Jeannie Cunyon. Her writing is incredible, but this book, Don't Miss Out, really brings you closer to God as the Holy Spirit. And you start to see and understand the power that is within you through him and how close to you he is and how much he guides you and counsels you when you seek him. So I encourage you to pick up that book. The link will be in the show notes, as will every one of these Bible passages and scripture verses. So head over to the show notes as soon as the show is over so you can tap into all of these resources. I'm also linking in the show notes a lot of previous episodes that tie into the this topic or some of the topics that we've mentioned throughout the throughout um, me recording this. But you will you will learn after you read, don't miss out. You will you will trust the gift of the Holy Spirit as your counselor like never before. And you know, I said it before, but I really do encourage you to read scripture. You can see in the verses I previously shared that God speaks to you directly when you need him to provide for you, strengthen you and guide you. And all of that information is there in scripture to build you up and to build that trust. So let's talk a little bit about faith, faith, patience, and trust to me equal belief. Back at the beginning of this year, the three words I chose, I didn't choose one. I chose three and I chose them for a reason. I chose faith because I wanted to grow in my faith. I chose patience because I wanted to become a more patient person. I wanted to be more patient to um, accept God's timing, not my own timing. And I wanted to trust him more and I wanted to trust myself more. So those were my three words, which to me equate to belief. I was increasing my belief in God and myself and my abilities. So when you have faith in God and yourself, you will trust there is always a solution. You will be able to see obstacles as opportunities and be open to experiences that you might not have trusted previously. Be patient. God's timing is limitless and perfect. You may feel the need to rush things, but if you trust in God's limitless timing by tapping into patience, your outcomes will be so much better. Sometimes he's preparing you before he gives you what you're asking for. Other times, what you're asking for may not be what is the best thing for you. 
And so he's not giving that to you. You won't understand that until, of course, until you're on the other side of what you're asking for, but have an open mind as you walk through the experiences to know that as long as you are seeking God, that you're allowing faith to guide you, that you are patient and that you're trusting, you will have positive outcomes. Have faith in God. And the, you know, scripture tells us that he is always available to us. He will always provide for us if you seek him and trust him. He gives you no reason to doubt or to have a lack of trust in him. Now, there may be a reason to doubt leaders in churches or other lay people, but that is a different conversation. I am not talking about earthly communities and buildings. I am talking strictly about trusting God himself and talking directly to him. Have faith in yourself. You were... You were created in the image of Jesus and he has given you endless gifts. If he has placed a calling on your heart, he will equip you by giving you the tools, support, people that you need to succeed. Your audience, believe that your audience trusts you, that they are ready to hire you, that they want to work with you, that they see the value you provide and that they need you. Only you can solve their problem the way that all of your life experiences and the gifts God God has given you can solve the problem. Have faith in your gifts and skills. Every part of your journey and every experience you've had to date have led you to be able to do the work that you've been called to do. The value can be found in the process of developing into who you are today. I have another scripture verse for you. Psalm 73, 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So I like to think of of trust as being like a seesaw. Remember when you were a kid on the playground and it was so hard to balance on both sides and you had to have basically equal weight, equal balance between the two people on each end. And if one was heavier, then obviously the other, the other one went higher in the air and so on and so forth. It takes a great amount of practice to balance trust and doubt and fear. It is only through the Holy Spirit that, and the work that I mentioned before that we can quiet our minds and calm our hearts of the doubts and unbelief and trust the grace of Jesus and ourselves to live out his calling for us. I want to leave you with one more Bible verse and it's Roman 12 two. do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Paul is telling us exactly what we need to do to live out our calling and trust in the Lord. We are not to depend on and conform to society for guidance and wisdom. God didn't design us in his image to fall into for us to fall into the traps of secular society and its tools like social media that distract us and cause us to doubt. We are to be transformed by renewing our minds. That process starts with our faith, seeking Jesus and the Holy Spirit, transforming our mindset through prayer and gad- gratitude and journaling to remove the bad and soak in the good. All right. I have hopefully inspired you. I um, feel like this was just on my heart that I needed to say it all. So that's what I did today. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. I put everything that I mentioned in the show notes. There's a complete blog post there. There are links to previous episodes, like the one, some some things I wrote blogs on and didn't record. So you'll have to just check and see, but um, you can either listen or you can read the blog post, whichever is there. Um, if there was a, a podcast episode, then that will be linked in the show notes um, when you go to the, the actual link in the show notes. And there's one on um, seeing obstacles as opportunities. There's one on discernment. There's one on making decisions. There's one on mindset. So there's a lot of of things that I link in this blog post that you can check out. And then the other thing I was going to encourage you to do is I created an ebook with 37 scripture verses that every entrepreneur needs to reflect on and live by. 
And there's a link to that in the show notes as well. So you can head over there and download that free ebook. I think you'll find the verses helpful. And there are probably a lot of them there that as you go through your day-to-day, as you as you try to build your personal brand to start and grow a business, you'll find these verses to um, in, not only inspiring, but to help you have that solid foundation in your faith so that you can indeed fully trust God and fully trust yourself. All right. If you guys would be so kind to leave a rating and review, if you liked this episode and thought it was helpful, I would be forever grateful. And the other thing I ask is that if you know if there's someone struggling with trust or struggling with a lack of trust and is seems to be overcome with doubt and fear, share this episode with them. Even if they're not an entrepreneur, it may help them. So that's it for today. You guys have a beautiful day, a beautiful weekend, and I will see you back here next week.